What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts, episode... Shit, I forgot. 148! <laughs> What's up, guys? How is everybody doing? Doing great, man. How about you? I'm doing really well, man. I got a new audio interface trying to make I, that thing tr- work. Trust me, I know. <laughs> it's been awesome to watch. You guys missed it. I'm doing a lot better now. I'm staring at you guys' beautiful faces. I mean, so it, it's a, it's a, this... it's the best part of the week, right? Beastly Thoughts Live, best part of the week. Get to see you guys. Have great conversations about video games. Always a great, always a great event. Absolutely. Well, this this is what I propose we do in the future. A lot of you guys love watching the show, and you you have an affinity towards Mr. Briar Rabbit. I think Briar should start a Patreon, and that Patreon, if you if you become a patron, you can watch the Before Beastly Thoughts show, and you can see him go through absolute hell trying to get his <laughs> OBS and his new <laughs> his new templates working, seeing the sweat and blood dripping off of his forehead. Before right, the there's show. a reason I'm I'm dripping sweat every time Beastly Thought starts. It's because I'm just trying to make every fucking thing work. It's great. You see how panicked you are, yeah. Every time before we go live. I mean, look, I'll I'll put it into a few words that you guys can understand. Every time I look at Briar, he has a look on his face like his wife just left him, and then I realize he's looking at his fucking computer trying to figure out what's wrong. You know, what's depressing. wrong this week? I should, you know what I should do is I should just record a video, like on my phone, of just getting this show started every week started. because it's oh, man. this week I got a new audio interface, so like all my sound is going into the computer like in a new method. Plus, I got an OBS upgrade, so I went from like version like seventeen point whatever to eighteen point zero point one. So I'm like, well, that's fucking hit or miss every time I do an OBS upgrade. <laughs> yep. That could yeah. go anyway. That could go anyway. I'm really excited to see you, Gary, Beastly, Robbie. We're gonna have a good show today. We got a lot of great news to talk about. I want. I'm really excited to talk about the Destiny news. I know that Robbie put it in the uh, in, yes, the, in the news this yes, week I because did. good I lord, he received a fucking metric. Shit I didn't even ton. know there was Destiny news. If I'm honest, <laughs> <laughs> it, it needs to be at the top Gary. of the news. Actually, that's big, big news. That is big news. Big Man. news. So Very let's start off with what you guys Gary. been playing this Welcome week. I know episode two for you. Sophomore slump this week. You get to see me choke. <laughs> well, let's get that out of the way, Gary. What have you been playing? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Just stares blankly at the camera. Um, no, I, I've been playing a lot actually. It's been a good week. Good week for gaming. Um, I've tried to split my time. Um, you know, dusting that that layer of of thick dust off of the VR headset and actually playing some games on the damn thing. Um, I feel like it's it's such an effort to set up that sometimes you just forget that it's there. Um, so I force myself to do that. But let's talk about Do you PS4, not keep so. it set up all the time, Gary? Like, mine's always kind of just there. It's always plugged in and ready to go. No, I don't. I try to keep... I'm, I'm real OCD with everything. So uh-huh. it's away on a stand in a cupboard, you know, just away. So for me, it's um yeah, it's a sort of five minute setup of really creating creating my safe zone and, and all that shit. So I have OCD, but I think it, it, it it's in a different way. Is it's got to be ready to go at all times. <laughs> and how often I, do you use it? Uh, you know, <laughs> when I first got it, it was every day. Yeah. Um, lately, yeah. it's you know I've been a little bit distracted by other games with Vari- with Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, with all the stuff that's come yeah. out lately, it's been hard to. Put aside VR Friday. That's what I did. VR Fun Friday. Uh, uh-huh. Just get the other Ooh, half in. Play it with friends, with partners. Just really do. I'll idea. get into that. I mean, I'll cover off what I did um, first with with the PS4. So, um, near Automata. I uh, bought it. It had been sitting on my my must playlist. Zelda and Horizon got in the way, but I finally got around to beating that game. Um, it was great. So, if anyone's um, interested in Nier, um, it's directed by Yoko Taro who's kind of a off, offbeat kind of eccentric character was behind the first Nier game and Drake and God. Uh, it was produced by Platinum Games as well. So they were the, um, I guess, responsible for the combat element. So if you were a fan of Bayonetta or oh, Metal yes. Gear Rising. Oh, if you love Platinum Games action, oh, this is probably right it, up your alley. Except for Ninja Turtles. <clears throat> go on. Yeah, let's I don't pretend know. that exists. Ninja Turtles is a modern masterpiece, but let's not go there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's best way to describe Nia is if you put two developers, uh, an Eastern developer and a Western developer in a room and pitch them the concept of a dystopian future with a female protagonist and robots roaming the world um, and let them go away. One of the Eastern guys would create Nia and the Western guys would create Horizon. 
Uh, and that's that's pretty much the best allegory to put to it. So to me, Ooh. it was uh, the spiritual opposite to playing Horizon and the perfect game to bounce off of it with. Um, it's it's a game that sets mood um, in music, in thematic um, landscape, in, in desolation, uh, and really gets you to to question uh, a lot of why you're playing the game as as much as what you're doing in the game. So my best way of explaining it was um, playing a good game to me and I experienced this in the Bioshock games and some other things is like watching a good magician so what I don't want to do is is feel like I'm playing to the beat of someone's drum um, and my only choices in dialogue are do you want to take the good path or the bad path to me it's all about you know taking me down the route that you want me to go but me not realizing that I'm being taken that way and all mm -hmm. of a sudden just dumping on me in a big way this big payoff um, and that's exactly what you get in in Nia it's breathtaking at times and there's 26 possible endings uh, one for each letter of the alphabet and they Jeez. let you know which one you've unlocked uh, i only unlocked one ending but yeah absolutely spectacular game uh, could could talk about it for the, the full hour but i won't um it's been good i mean did any of you guys have any um thoughts on it have you have you had any exposure to it but uh, it well, looks I... super cool from what i've seen but i don't know enough about it yeah but it looks awesome uh... As a huge fan of Bayonetta 2 on the, the Nintendo Wii U, uh, I was, after that game, I was like holding my breath for whatever whatever they were doing next. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, Turtles came out, and they've had some other games as well getting canceled for the Xbox One. But I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot of, uh, you know, gaming outlets speak about how amazing this game is. I saw Digital Foundry talk about it. I've seen some reviews. And I was really wondering, I was like, are they back to the, the formula of Bayonetta 2? And everything I've seen has led me to think they are. This game is definitely on my must-play list. It's a game I'll be buying sometime sometime soon. You guys know I, I buy a lot of games and I don't get a chance to play them. But I, I feel that your analogy for this is perfect. It's the Eastern representation of a game like Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that's an incredible way to put it. Uh, and I feel like more than likely that's exactly what you're going to get. It's a dystopian future. It's a female protagonist, robots roaming the landscape. And it's so similar, yet so different. But one thing about this game that I've seen it really, it's kind of like what you said with the with the magician thing. It's a big surprise. There's so many different aspects of gameplay in this game. You know, it's a third person a adventure game. And sometimes it turns into a side scroller, you know hack and slash type of adventure there are other times where it's like those old arcade games where you're like the ship flying and there's enemies coming into yeah. the screen and you're shooting them so to me it's just a myriad of gameplay types that somehow they nailed magically and uh, i can't wait to play it thank you for sharing that i definitely am going to be picking that game up yeah i mean if, if you want to be entertained and have a narrative you would play horizon and have that strong um hollywood style story that scripted story not detracting from it i loved horizon mm -hmm. but this is is more um getting you to to question it, it's it's a game based on existentialism so what is life um you know is is life humanity or or can life be captured in in robotic form is consciousness life you're, you're playing as an android someone devoid of life you're fighting robots who've recolonized the planet and created their own societies mm -hmm. uh, lifeless that the world is lifeless yet somehow there's life lives on and uh, yeah, there's this perfect um, moments of, of the Japanese melodic soundtrack. I don't know if there's anyone that's old enough to remember Tenchu on the on the PS1 and PS2. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, no idea. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> the old Ninja games. It's got that haunting Japanese chanting melodic soundtracks, and I could listen to the soundtrack for hours. But yeah, that was my um, console AAA game. Um, absolutely loved it. Would recommend anyone to to go out and try it but i'll be warned it's punishingly difficult at least in the opening uh the game yeah, i've heard it's hard as shit sometimes yeah the game just square kicks you in the nuts at the start of the game like just sits there and says open your legs i'm gonna plant mm -hmm. one straight straight oh. in you. <laughs> you can take that <laughs> you're gonna buy it place. right now um, <laughs> so they, they set the tone by saying this game does not auto save um, and you will figure out how to save in the game. That's the text that comes up. And the first save point is 45 minutes into the game after the first boss. So Ooh. if you die, <laughs> oh right back, back you go. Um, I played it on one of the easier settings because I'm a scrub um, and terrible. But you, you can could. actually play it on a mode where anything, one hit from anything, will kill you instantly. Um, real top-end punishing difficulty. That sounds like pulling teeth. Oh yeah, my God. it's... 
it's great. Um, I'll, I'll leave it there. If anyone wants to discuss it more with me, I'm, I'm open to talking about it. I, I heard about a really inter interesting mechanic at the end of the game where you can basically sacrifice your save to allow other people to have a better time or an easier time. You guys hear yes, about that? I think so, yes. yeah. Yeah, it, it, without going into to spoilers on it, it's right. to do with the end credits and supporting other players who potentially may not have reached the right ending. You know, you can come in as a cavalry man to help them. But yeah, it, 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 the, the game asks you to delete all of your progress to date. And if you do that and start from fresh, you're helping another player. Uh, it's got the Dark Souls mechanic where if you die, your body stays with a, a message uh, oh, and wow. you can recover things from that body. You know, that kind of element to it, the echoes. But yeah, yeah. Um, there's tons more I could say on it, but I'm, I'm not going to because I'm conscious that other things that the VR Friday that I've started with my, my fiance, um, we get down together and we say, Do you know, what? on Friday, we're going to get the Oculus out and we're going to play some goddamn VR and we're going to buy some new experiences. I don't care if it's a triple A game like Resident Evil. I'm happy for it to just be a two hour, put it up, you know, mm -hmm. pay the ten dollars, play it. Um, and I've got two examples of those. One of them's free. Um, and one of them was $13. So I'll start off with the free one because it was nice nice and quick. It's a, it's actually a, uh, a movie, 12 minutes short, something called Dear Angelica. Really Pretty recommend enough. it to anyone. It, it's, it was um, premiered at the Sundance Film Festival this year um, in the uh, modern presentation of art section. And it's the story of a girl remembering uh, the memories of her mother who was, an, who was passed on and was an actress um, through watching VHS tapes but the beauty of it in VR is that it's painted like a watercolor canvas that appears around you in 360 degrees and it's the only medium that could tell that story and tell it in such a touching and emotional way you know 12 minutes in and I was just a, a mess <laughs> I needed to really? lay down off. It was, <laughs> well, grown man in tears nothing like that oh I was I was in a fetal position on the floor Nobody Shaking. can see you cry mm. in VR. You got that nice <laughs> headset. You're totally isolated. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, no, my, no my, embarrassment. No shame. I, I was saying to you, Brian, my fiance is a, a massive hard ass and just called me a pussy and went through <laughs> it. And completely, completely unaffected. But you know, I love it. women have bigger balls than all of us here, so that's 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 fair to say. Um, but but yeah, um, dear Angelica, if anyone dear has. Angelica the capability to to watch it with a vr headset or has someone that they know that can do it watch it take that 12 minutes out for yourself and just see how vr can can actually be a platform for creation of art that's unique to that medium is it oculus was, only or is it oculus and steam um it is rift only on the store but you can buy it through uh, with, it's free so you can acquire it through revive or any other third party piece of software um but yeah, absolutely stunning. It was actually drawn in Quill. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of Quill, really? it's like Google Brush. Yeah, so someone has gone on with a VR headset on, used the two touch controllers, and painted this canvas around you. So they've painted it from the perspective of the person who's going to be viewing it. That's, That's insane. so neat. That's I got to really check cool. that out. Yeah, uh, it's free. It's free. You've I'm got really nothing to now. lose. It's and awesome. I, I promise you, again, you know, trigger warning if you've had a recent bereavement. Obviously, it's based around around that. Uh, but if you're happy and comfortable with that subject matter, it's told in such a stunning way. Um, completely switching tangent to something that's much more fun, Trickster VR I played. So if anyone here is a fan mm. of Diablo. I may games. be interested yeah. in looter yeah. type games. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Picture a procedurally generated Diablo, which is already great in itself. Mm -hmm. um, but rather than viewing it top down, you are the adventurer. Mm -hmm. So this is complete. <laughs> Go on. It's Go on. got um, locomotion movement, Bri, which I know you're happy with. You've got the freedom and ability to move around as you would any first-person shooter. You've got um, 13 weapons. So that's a, you know, a, a sword and a, and a shield, bow and arrow, lance, throwing knives, um, sort of demon hunter twin. Champions um, of Norath, yeah. Very much thing like twin um, crossbows. And... The guy, it's, it's actually early access, so it's $13 on early access. Um, procedurally generated with a horde mode. Imagine being able to go in there and live the gladiator fantasy. You know, you can put your shield up and you can punt people with the sides of your shield, block them away, come in and slash with the sword. The combat mechanic is the tightest I've felt on any VR game, and I've, I've played quite a lot, and I've that's, played AAA. That, that's important on these kind of games, because a lot of these VR games with a sword is what you can do is you stick out your hand and go, and it... It registers as like a full ah, every time you. So it's like the you you cheat your way through a game. Does it does that work or are you 
do you really does it sense like momentum or how's it work so it senses momentum it's got ragdoll physics introduced in it he's continually updating this thing so the enemy types that you've got some of them have got shields and armor of their own so if you come in with a slash or try to poke it you won't get through it you're gonna have to hit the part of their body that's exposed or you're going to have to stun them with a shield first to break their guard and then come in with a, a block i played it for half an hour i'm a I bet I'm, you were tired I tell you, I'm a 30-year-old I'm man with very little exercise or physique. I was shattered. I was sweating. I was steaming <laughs> up the VR headset. It's it's a workout in all the right ways. But, yeah, um, I do not regret the $13. Trickster VR, get in on the early access, support the developer. He's doing this off the side of his desk. He's got a full-time job, you know. This is something that he's doing for fun. And he's created that's something that's, yeah, 97% positive with, I believe, 600 or so reviews um, on Steam. Oh. Yeah. Stunning. Get get on it, Brian. It's, I mean, I jump on really, that. Yeah, I, the, I I saw that it's available on both, right? If you buy on one, you you get it on the other as well. It's free? not available on both, but the um oh. the, the developer kindly tweeted us and said that if you get in touch with him, he'll give you a code for for both. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the only th advice I give anyone who's going to try it out is take the time to go into the options menu if you feel you've got capable VR legs. Turn off the comfort settings um, because they're incredibly intrusive. You've got the whole um, 30 degree um, teleport. Sort Resident of, uh, Evil 7. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got that. And also when you move, it puts on the uh, the blinkers, like the horse blinders that give you a screen size about that big. Mm -hmm. um, I'd recommend turning both of those off. As soon as I did, I had a really immersive, deep experience. I'm, um, you know, but, I'm really glad that. So I'm not I'm not really sure if it's the developers that are getting better at displaying like movement in a first person world or if we're as players getting used to experiencing it that way. But I'm glad that's a thing that can happen because I was really worried that we'd never have first person games with like realistic locomotion. Right. And it seems like it is possible. Right. Games like Onward, this game, Trickster, like these games are showing us that this is a possibility. We're going to be able to do this. And it moves significantly faster than onward. You have also got the teleport forward option mm -hmm. where you can leapfrog around. So it is accessible to newcomers, but I'd say the experience is incredibly compromised. Uh, but yeah, that's that's um, that's my uh, my VR Fun Friday. So I'm going to do this every week. Um, awesome. Do a couple of experiences that just kind of the PSVR as well, so don't feel excluded if anyone hears exclusively console. There was just not much out there. Oh, you, VR, VR. Baby. Robbie, you got VR. Excellent. No, he's got the phone. It is yeah, I, I got it for Gear VR. That's it, though. <laughs> I'll bring Gear VR into it. Uh, and then finally, I've played only play. Mass Effect, and I've had a complete change of heart. But oh god, uh, I know that other people have been playing Mass Effect, so I'll um mm. I'll let other people have their view, and then I'll come in my revelatory experience. And it was actually all thanks to Mr. Rabbit in the corner there. But um, I'm going <laughs> to pass the mic. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, Robbie, I know you've been playing Mass Effect. What do you think about it so far? Yeah, so I believe when I dropped off on Andromeda, I haven't played it in a couple days now. I think I was close to maybe 12 to 15 hours in. And, you know, Gary, we were talking about how you played the early trial and you said you guys sh should be aware this game is really rough the first 10 hours. You know, hopefully it gets better. I had to completely agree with you. The first 5 to 10 hours, I was like, I don't like this game. The whole time I'm playing it, I'm just like, the combat feels weird. The story is just not interesting. The Everything about it, you know, facial animations, like there was nothing pulling me in. I'm like, there is literally nothing good I can say about this game. And I'm like, this oh. is going to really disappoint people because this is not good at all. Hold on, Robbie. Are, are you talking about Mass Effect Andromeda or The Legend of Zelda? <laughs> Mass Holy Effect. shit, Beastly. Shots fired. <laughs> no, Zelda's great. I have very few complaints. Almost the same thing you said about Zelda. Go ahead, though, Robbie. No, I had really no complaints about Zelda. But no, but the thing is, I was playing Mass Effect. I'm like, there is literally nothing good I can say about this game. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this. And I was like, you know what? I've heard after eight to ten hours, it finally gets good. It gets going. Let's keep playing. And I am happy to report the game does get better, man. It finally really kicks into gear where... You can see past all the issues, the combat. As you get more abilities, it becomes really satisfying and fun. Uh, the story just kind of starts to dive in more. The planets are more interesting to explore. Every single element of Mass Effect that completely turned me off, it it's like a 180 turn. It just went all the way around and was like, we're going to become a really good video game now. And 
it sucks though because you know you have to play the first couple hours and it's not good like it's straight up not good i really did not enjoy it at all but it, hey, that's a real better. failure if you've got a good game hidden between 10 hours of boredom man that's it's that's a, that's fucked. Especially <laughs> first impressions too, guys, like are so important. You know, you yeah. need to really impress people out of the gate. And this is like completely not even close to that. How long is this well, game? I've heard it's somewhere around, you know, 50, 60 hours, maybe a little longer yeah. than that. Because I heard so a lot of people a, did. A fifth or a sixth of this game is terrible. And it's right up at the top, right up at the front. Uh, well, no, yeah. I think the ten, the 10 hours is a bit misleading, bro. The but, intro can be done in three. It was uh -huh. just a 10 hour early access that people were given. So they played that intro. Yeah, you know, it's subjective. Like some people might go and do a bunch of side stuff. Some people might just go straight through the story. So some people will get to it faster than others. Me, I kind of took my time. But uh, yeah, there's no doubt about it, though. I think people will agree that like it really sucks. They completely failed when it comes so to it, the beginning of the game. Is this is this kind of similar to like the Wolfenstein, the New Order debacle? Or the beginning of the game. No, but this is it. like way longer. This takes way longer to get good, though, than Wolfenstein. It feels like the the issues with the facial animations are all stacked heavy on the front end. Like I think they rushed animations of two or three major characters that are in your face a lot during that that um, that first. It's so program. noticeable too. Like it's it's shocking. Like I just couldn't connect to the characters. I'm like, they really just this game needed to be delayed because it's not ready. Like, it was clear to me when I was playing it. I'm like, I don't think this was done. They needed more mm. time on this. Oh, so to well, thank, I, I believe, Gary, uh, pre-show, you were saying you were like 28 hours in? Yeah, I'm, obviously, I've, I've put 10 hours of that were my early access. It just tags onto that. So probably 18 hours post-prologue. Um, and I have to, to echo exactly what Robbie just said, that the worst representation of the game was put out as the advertisement for the game, which I oh, think is... God crazy if they'd have just put out the multiplayer only aspect i don't think they'd have had anywhere near the bad press that they had at least prior to launch and it Completely. wouldn't have yeah done it um for me the animation issues were centralized around two or three characters which you have a lot of interaction with in the early game which you don't see as much and you spend a lot more time interacting with aliens moving forward and the aliens look great they look really really good that you know because I think it's difficult to see what an alien's face should look like moving. So I think it's easier to, to get that through. Um, for me, the combat evolves a lot more. It's very similar to the combat of Destiny it's... or The Division in that it's ability-based. And if you haven't got any abilities unlocked, it's very vanilla. You know, you're standing it's there. It's so boring, yeah. yeah. It's not even fun. Like, it's just really boring. So once you start unlocking those abilities you start to be able to weave combos together and play in a, in a unique way that defines you. The biggest change for me came from what Briar um, said last week. I watched back some of his comments and thought, you know, this guy speaks sense, you know, may maybe sort of five to 10% of the time. So <laughs> I'll, I'll pick out, I'll pick out those golden nuggets when I can. Um, no, he actually, he made a comment about it being Star Trek in a nutshell, space opera. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, actually that's so, that's so right. I didn't give a shit about these characters. I was using them as an end to earn XP. Where's the end of the quest? Where is it on my mini map? Can I go there? Can right. I just do what they kill this thing? Collect that. When I stop doing that, I think, do you know what? I'm in no rush to complete this. I don't care about the main story. I'm going to give a shit about what, you know, Mr. Zulu here. Says. Yeah, the combat's definitely the best part of the game. Would you agree, Gary? I think that's what makes Andromeda. It saves it for me. I'd say the combat. Really fun. The combat's solid. For me, the best part of the game has been oh. the role, the role play potential. Thank God, thank God. I, ho I was hoping it wouldn't be the, the combat. That's not what Mass Effect is. Yeah, so, totally. Though. That's a good point. For me, the the side quests are split into five tiers. So once you work that out and figure out that the lowest tier is exclusively tasks, which are almost tutorial level, then you've got system based side quests. You've got crew based side quests. You've got kind of main story side quests, and then main story. If you prioritize that in terms of I want to get to know more about my crew, so I'm going to clear out these quests and, and really understand that and, and, and immerse yourself into it. I'd say it's it's on par or superior to The Witcher 3 in terms of depth of side quest. I had two. Really? Which, wow. Yeah, I had two that I won't go into. Well, one of them I can go into uh, very quickly because it's a shorter example and it's not a spoiler. When you start to colonize the planets, you determine which type of people you want there. Do you want military people? Do you want scientists? Do you want technical people, explorers. And, and based on which people you choose, 
um, to come out of cryo and start populating that planet, the relatives of the other people that you haven't picked get pissed at you. They're like, why, why did you pick soldiers? Like all of my, all my, my, my mum and my, you know, my sister and my kid, they're all scientists and they're sitting there. You've gone for military. My scientists are left there. What do you do in that situation? How do you appease those people? And then you've got to go through and either justify your decision, double down on it. Do you then talk to the, the cryogenics people to, to release some of the people? But if you do that, then you've got to release everyone because you can't release oh, some. Wow. And it's real complexities and moral choices that I got myself invested in. And to me, that sounds like Mass Effect. This yes, sounds like Mass absolutely. Effect, what you're absolutely. doing. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I'm really glad to hear you guys telling me that this is this yeah. is waiting for me. Because uh, I was, I was like, man, I love Mass Effect as a series. Just be patient. But is all everybody, I say. like, I feel like the overwhelming majority of the internet is just like, yo, fuck Mass Effect on drama. <laughs> <Doug laughs> you like, know, yeah. It is a little <laughs> like you know, people definitely like to overblow things, but like, I mean, like I said, like there wasn't anything good I could say about the game within the first ten hours. Like there was nothing pulling me in. Not yeah. the combat. Not the story. Yeah, that's not a the bad thing. Nothing. But if there yeah. is a gem at the end, I am playing playing on playing this game. I've told you guys it before. It does get good. Which but, you know, like, if they can patch some of the flaws, I've heard some, like, quests can't be completed because of bugs and, you know, stuff like that. If they can patch some of that stuff yeah. over the next few months, during the summer, maybe it's discounted down to, like, 30 or $40. It might be the bargain of the bargain of the year. A lot of those issues have been console variants. So I've played oh, really? PC, um, PC Ultra settings, you know, nice and pretty, 60 mm. frames, loving it. I've only had one issue which was solved by reloading a previous save. So I had one of my crew members clone themselves. So following a dialogue, um, two of them appeared afterwards. And I thought, oh, I'll zone out and come back in. Came back, still two. There's two members of one of my crew wandering around. So all I did was reload previous to that conversation, which it auto saves cyclically anyway. Uh, and it corrected that. But That's all good. of this funny animations, all the other things, I, I think it's a console issue because the forums appear to be confirming that PC is which you'd expect to be more jank, but the PC for yeah. once has got the better end. I don't know. It's odd, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm happy because I, I do want to play this game. Show. I love the Mass Effect series, and I've been, I was really looking forward to this game. It's one of mo probably the yeah. most anticipated game besides Destiny 2 for me of the I gotta year. I got to say, if you're going into Andromeda, just be really patient. Like, just take your time and just Jeez, give it a chance. that's not really one of my strong suits. <laughs> I know, Briar, but you got to do it if you want to yeah. find the love in this game. It takes time to get good. So, say, easily, go, have you yeah. started playing Zelda yet? Yeah, well, I'm probably about. <laughs> God damn it, Briar! I'm not very far in. Okay, uh, I did take my time beating Horizon Zero Dawn, and I absolutely loved it. And I thought the ending was amazing. Now my six-year-old's playing it. Oh, that shit is uh, crazy by the it's, end. It's a very good game. Now I'm playing The Legend of Zelda. I haven't given a lot of time to it, but that is the game that I'm focused on. It's one of those crazy situations where you just buy a bunch of games and you know they're all kind of new. Yeah. So instead of just playing the, your Nintendo Switch, you want to at least load up the other games and try them. So right. I've been I've been playing a little bit of uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, which, mm -hmm. you know, up on seeing it initially, I kind of had kind of negative feelings about it. I was like, this is not Ghost Recon. I like Jungle Storm and Island mm -hmm. Thunder. This doesn't feel the same as what I used to play on my Xbox or on my PlayStation 2. It actually does. They just added this incredible open world mechanic and kind of Grand Theft Auto-esque feel to uh, maneuvering around and, and, and tra traversing the landscapes to get to these people and these these targets and wipe them out. It's just, it feels really amazing. You know, you got these little drones that you can deploy and all these new tactics that I guess modern, uh, they use in modern warfare. Nice little pun. But it, it really is pretty incredible. I've also uh, given very limited time to For Honor. I told you guys, I think last week that I had that game and I just loaded it up and tried it probably for the first hour and a half. Right now I'm really on the fence about it. Yeah, I man, that game is like a fighting game though. It's like you've got to you've got to take the time to learn the mechanics before you can really judge that game in my opinion because yeah. it's it is deep. Yeah, yeah, I, I finally ran into a boss that was doing some thug shit on me. I was like, you're not like wait you're not like everybody else. Uh, you know, this chick just ran at me and she just started jumping around me and doing all kinds of... I was like, what? I forgot I was there was a single ask... player until you said boss. Yeah. <laughs> I totally yeah. forgot there was a single player mode. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm coming into it late, right? So I can't go straight to the multiplayer because I'm going to get completely demolished. So I've got to learn the, the fundamentals and see if the game has a single player that's worth even checking out. I let my wife play it. She immediately left. She said, this is bullshit. I do not like this game. I was like, well... 
<laughs> yeah, everyone, everyone has their opinions, but yeah, so far sure. I do, I do uh, enjoy the, the uh, mechanic of the I guess the way that you're able to block and counterattack and all these these things, the special moves. Uh, but there's a lot of cannon fodder. Jesus, there is a ton of cannon fodder in the single player, and I'm talking one swipe at a time. You're taking out these guys with one hit. You turn around, hit another guy. It's like boop, boop, boop. You know, hitting the groundhogs and mm -hmm. you know the groundhog game at Chuck E. Cheese. I played that yesterday. Yeah, it, but, in the multiplayer in Dominion mode, that ends up that ends up getting added into your strategy. You know, because you build up your mm -hmm. kind of special abilities by taking out those minion guys, so that you, then you can use them against real players. It ends up being worthwhile. I, I haven't played the single player, obviously, but well, the game I mean, looks amazing. I'll say that the game is one of the better looking PS4 Pro games I've even tried. It looks great. It runs really well, uh, and I'm looking. For, I, I really want to try. I want to play it some more. I'm in a really bad, you know, predicament right now where I've got this. And let me say, The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is what you guys have been saying. Just from the little bit of time that I've spent on it, getting my glider, which is, I feel like Batman. Wait uh, a when you when you said it's what us guys have been saying, do you mean like the the sensible people on the podcast? Or yeah, we're not talking about Canadians. Okay, I'm no. just gonna back out and quit the show right now. <laughs> Kid him, Robbie. Kappa, it's, it's, Kappa. It's, it's all good. It's, it's a beautiful game. It's incredibly uh, real, well realized. Um, and just for the little bit of time that I've spent with it, you know, foraging, finding items, and and healing, you know, items. And I love climbing and, and, and getting those apples out of the trees. But it's a great game so far. I've, I've had no issues with it. I think that it's going to probably be uh, at least the next twenty or thirty hours of my dedicated playtime. But it's really difficult. It was difficult anyway to just exclusively play this when I bought so many other games. Yeah, there's a lot uh, of really without, great games out right now. Without trying them out. But yeah, this is the game that I'm playing. This is the one that I'm... The game is in here. You guys only see the black screen. But this is what I'm going to play. This is what I'm going to beat because i got to catch up to you guys. I, you know, my wife looked at me. She said, babe, she doesn't call me beastly. She said, you know something's wrong when Briar's beating more games than you and all he plays is Destiny. I said, you know what? Uh, that's not necessarily true, though, anymore. <laughs> it's funny though. Hey, hey, hey. Um, Basically, I've got a question for you actually because you, you touched on Wildlands, which I'm interested in. I, I didn't play it. Um, I watched some streams of it, watched the early access. I've heard people say that it's a great game, but it's a great game that's come out two years later than it should have. Had in terms of the um, doing anything new or being innovative, like the, oh, the landscape's been pushed on by games like Destiny and The Division and things that have advanced the the kind of open world shooter how, how would you answer that you know i i think that sometimes old news can still be new news it all depends on what you're looking for like for instance this leak of the new call of duty that's coming out is world war ii this is something we've all seen and played before it's going to come out they can't really push the envelope and, and change too much gameplay mechanics because we've seen it and it's based on reality but it's still going to be a new game and cer certain people are going to look forward to that type of experience for the people out there who played Ghost Recon and know what this game is about, it's team squad-based anarchy. You're out there taking out targets and extracting people and saving people. Uh, it is what you're used to, but they've added this whole new mechanic of being able to hijack people, steal their cars, drive down th th through the jungles of where. That's not new. That was new in Grand Theft Auto Three or Grand Theft no, Auto. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about for this particular game. So what? To, to sum it up, if you know what. Uh, what Ghost Recon is, and it's something that tickles your fancy if you're an older gamer who played it years ago. And of course, that was one of my favorite games, one of the first games I ever played online because I didn't have a computer back then. Uh, it was yep. always a special game for me. It does, it feels like Ghost Recon, but they've added this whole new open world. You know, you get in a car, the radio comes on, it feels like Grand Theft Auto for a second. You drive to a spot, you get out, you start climbing up a mountain, and you throw a drone out, and you go and surveil the area. All this stuff is new and modern. I'll be uh, I'll but, be interested if you end up playing this game for more than an hour or two. I've already done that. How many hours you put into it? An hour and a half. I said an hour and two. <laughs> <laughs> like if you put ten hours in this game and you're still liking it, I, like I think that's a different story. With an hour is, in, it's a little hard. This, I feel like to yeah. get a real good Listen, feeling. Guys, on this, thing. this this is the bottom line, and this is a very tough predicament if you work forty hours a week or more. There's so many games that are coming out consistently. It's like Mass Effect Andromeda. The wife looked at me this morning and said, I'm hearing that this game is not that great, but I love Mass Effect. We're going to have to get that. And of course, I'm going to get the game either way, right? Because I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, almost as much as I like Final Fantasy. Um, but 
that's another game that's coming out that's going to take another 40, 50 hours, and I'm looking at all these other games that are going to take... There's no way to catch up. Yeah. You cannot stop time I'm, to catch I'm up. Not saying, a, I'm not saying anything, but every hour you put in to Wildlands... We're going to judge you as an hour that you didn't put into Zelda. I'm just just going to leave that out there. I think that's fair, I Gary. That. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that I've tried it, I've, I've played it, and you know, I've seen what it is. It's here. It's not going anywhere. I really want to play Zelda, I, and the different ways that you can play this. You know, my kids are outside playing the best game on earth, tetherball. I went out there and sat in my patio, sat, sat, and I pulled this thing out, pulled the kickstand out, bloop. You know, pull the controllers yeah. off and played it, and it was just awesome. Man, I love the, the different ways you can play this game. That's parenting right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just there's a there's the a eye. website that I don't like to visit too often called Time Wasted on Destiny that tells you uh, how many uh, hours you put site. into Destiny. I would yeah. like I would like a website to be created called Time Beastly Wasted on Wildlands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my wife my my wife could make that website. <laughs> I might have her jump on that. Um, I, I'm not going to talk much about what I've been playing because I've been playing uh, Destiny pretty much solely uh, all week because I am, I'm literally as hyped as I can be about uh, not only the Age of Triumph coming up next week, but also the news about Destiny 2 that we'll talk about a little later. Uh, I've been basically, my time in Destiny over the last few days has been just be ready for Tuesday. Be too, ready, man. you know, on... Uh, on uh, like Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I think all I did was just kind of clear or build up characters, build up raid ready characters. Cause uh, I've literally been just PVPing for like, I can't remember how long, like two or three months at this point, maybe longer. Uh, so it's, it's all about like, do I have gear sets ready to go for the new raids or the revamped raids that are coming on Tuesday? So we'll talk more destiny later. I'm not going to go into too much about what I've been playing because it's all been destiny. I've got a quick question for you on it, though. Are you concerned that we are once more, like Wrath of the Machine, over-preparing for the content that we've got to devour it like ravenous beasts mm -hmm. and once more be left with nothing to play? Um, oh, God. I'm not that concerned about it because it's not a full DLC. Uh, it, it is the raids. Like, we're going to get the raids back. They are bringing back some weekly stuff that uh, we could talk about on the Age of Triumph stuff. You know, we are going to get these weekly events back. It'll be fun to go back into the raids. For the initial week, I'm going to want, want to do at least three of these raids, right? To get to get all the gear I could possibly get out of them. On week two, uh, we're going to have two raids, two new raids available. And I'm going to want to do probably six raids to get all the <laughs> potential gear out of them. In week three, oh. we're going to have three raids available. I'm going to want to do the, the newest one. Plus the other two to get all that gear out Nine of. Nine raids. In week four. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of raiding. I don't know that I can honestly, like, even in week two or week three, I don't know if I can honestly maintain that kind of a pace, right? So I think as the month goes on and as a couple of months go on, I'll just be con kind of continuing to raid, doing... They also introduced this really cool story mission new feature where you go into this playlist and it, it just plays story missions for you, like a strike rotation playlist, but it brings in the Nightfall modifiers, which I think is going to yes. be really fun. That would um, be cool. Quick question, Briar. Do you still play with the Milky Sirloins? Yeah, I mean, it's a different version of the Milky Sirloins. It's a new version of the Milky Sirloins, but... Yeah, it's like it's like the new temptations. That yeah, kind of, kind of, exactly like that. Got gotcha. you. Um, yeah. So let's get into the news. What do we What do we got to talk about today, Robbie? You guys want to start off with Destiny Two, or should we go from the order? We'll start I mean, off I with think the Destiny important 2. stuff and then move on to Destiny Two at the end. Don't worry about it. You sure? Did someone just shoot a gun? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm poking Briar with a stick. I'm waiting for him to poke back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll just start from the top because uh, that's the easiest way to do it. All right. It. Destiny so 2. We got to start with Destiny 2, Robbie. Come on. Oh, Go fine. Destiny 2. This is good news. <laughs> All right, Destiny 2, we saw a poster released uh, for Destiny 2. Or not released, but leaked from an Italian GameStop. Why don't I just read it? Uh, okay. As long as it's not you know verbatim from a website. <laughs> I got it, Briar. Don't you worry. I got it. All right. <laughs> Images online have surfaced for a promotional poster of the unannounced Destiny 2 from GameStop Italy, revealing 
several details. The game will be released on September 8th of this year, at least in the EU as of this time. There will be a multiplayer beta, and the rumored kickoff date is in June, with some sort of exclusivity for PS4. Lastly, Jason Schreier of Kotaku later confirmed on Twitter that the poster is indeed real, and an official announcement of Destiny 2 is coming very, very soon. It's going to be available at E3. So, Robbie, I want to know where yeah. you heard June. The beta. Uh, IGN. I kind IGN? of just bits and pieces and made my own, though. All That's right. Because uh, I haven't heard anything out of Bungie from that, so I'd be really interested where they got that info because it is pretty important when that thing is going to release. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you read everything that's important in there. Uh, PlayStation is going to get exclusive content again in Destiny 2 like it got in Destiny 1. I think that's, like, the major that's downer. Surprising. Yeah. The major downer for this announcement or this this leak. However, uh, Destiny 2, seeing some art. The art was, I think, pretty provocative. Uh, I've talked a lot about that art. No uh, helmets. No helmets. Uh, from what I gather, from what I see in that poster, is that I see... Uh, the three guardians pitched in battle uh, in the last city, possibly in the rubble of the tower. Um, you know, like it's a pretty evocative image. It's much darker. It's you know gray and tan and brown. What's that? Very bleak, as opposed to yeah. if you see any Destiny One art, you're going to see bright colors and you know a real vivid. And this mm -hmm. looks like a real darker tone. So. It's pretty cool looking stuff, man, and uh, we're getting we're definitely getting a beta. We know that now. Hopefully, we'll see an alpha as well. Uh, that would be great. Um, and September eighth, that's a nice early release. That's less than five months away, or just over five months away. Yeah. And it, if that release date is actually, you know, if it comes out to be real, do you think there's actual possibility that we get the beta at E three? Oh think yeah, it's possible they could do that. I think it's very likely. Actually, the, the beta is available now. No, what do you think, Gary? I, I could totally see that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that would be awesome. I mean, they've done that before, so there's no reason why they couldn't pull that again. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just whether or not it's a PS4 exclusive beta. With the, that's the point that Brian no, made about the PS4. I don't think so. The PS4 exclusivity, we don't know what that means. Now, everyone's nervous that this means weapons, strikes, you know, real content. Mm -hmm. For all we know, it could be early, you know, a week of early beta. Mm -hmm. um, it could be sparrows and ghosts. We don't know what it could be. Um, I feel like community reception has been hostile enough to these exclusives, right. especially with, and I don't know, Briar, if you want to talk about the PC indications, um, mm. but with PC I as a two. potential platform, yep. I don't know whether or not Sony is still going to hold all the cards with two out of the three platforms being Microsoft. So I would I would move forward with the expectation that we'll, the exclusivity... Exclusive content in Destiny 2 will be very similar to Destiny 1 until we hear differently. Yeah, and I think with the beta 2, I think what will happen is it'll start first on PS4, then like a week later, Xbox can join in. I think that's exactly yeah. what they'll do. Uh, with the alpha fun. for Destiny 1, the alpha was solely for PlayStation players. Mm -hmm. Then the that's beta right. opened up for PlayStation players first, and then later Xbox players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I could see I could see a situation like that happen again too. Yeah. It's a good time to, to get back into Destiny, Briar. It's super exciting. Oh, my God. Have it. you seen any of the gear, Beastly, that they're releasing with Age of Triumph? No. Oh, Age of Triumph cool comes out on Tuesday, and it is – all the raids are coming back, right? They're, they're Yeah, the original raids, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, all four raids are, are getting, like, kind of brought back in current light level. They're all getting new equipment. They're bringing out a ton of new exotics. All of the old raid primaries, all of the raid primaries – are getting exotic versions, like it's really exciting. It's really going to be well a fun. As well legendaries too. Like there's tons of different yeah. ones, and they yeah. have elemental damage on the exotic versions. It's really cool. But so, there's yeah. only four for people who are part of the original vanilla Destiny, correct? No, it's for everybody. Every, Never, it's a free update for everybody. Thing. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, anybody who's playing Destiny today gets this update for free and can start playing Age of, Age of Triumph tomorrow or Monday on Tuesday. Sorry. Yeah. It's also. It's worth noting as well that this is the first time that we've seen an update be predominantly, aside from big uh, titular updates, be actually focused on PvE content mm. um, and enhancing that. So as a PvP player myself, I mean, I'm hyped. I'll play it, but I'm not, it's not much for me to do. You know, I used to, I've, I've done Wrath of the Machine once 
Um, you know, I did King's Fall a similar amount of times until I got everything I needed. But this is the first time that the PVE players on the forums and in the community feel that they're actually getting Bungie are working to deliver something from them. Um, that there's very little, if anything. I think there's what Iron Banner year year two only weapons are coming back into circulation. Yeah, new or old Iron Banner gear coming back. One thing that's I think actually pretty exciting for PvP is that they are doing a sandbox update. Uh, with the Age of Triumph, it's minor tweaks, but significant yeah. ones. Um, mm -hmm. And the influx of a bunch of, I wouldn't call them new weapons, but returning weapons, yeah. uh, I think could change the landscape a little bit. Vigilant Confluence, I always loved. Oh, that's such a good skill. And the tower vendors yeah. are all getting a refresh, not just once, but weekly. That's true. So we yep. can see some, we can see some changes there, but... It, you know, it, it's definitely, a, you, you are correct. It is definitely a PvE-focused update. Yeah, so for wow. anyone that's been sleeping on the PvE content, just wanted to make that clear that this is for you. Yeah. This is what it is. Well, this is you know, it's time funny time that Bungie in, does that, like, at the very end, like when the original Destiny did it's Death Rattle. Now we'll do something so, for PvE players. It makes sense, though, Beastly, because, like, from all the leaks that we've seen so far with, like, the Mega Bloks leak that we talked about a few months ago where they kind of, Mega Bloks kind of leaked possibly some story spoilers where the tower may be getting attacked. Yep. Um, you know, it makes sense to build our guardians up to the most powerful they've ever been right now and then knock them down with destiny Two, Right. So the age yeah. of triumph, right. It's the, we're triumphant. Gotcha. We're, we're like, so look at that. Follow the path of star Wars, a new hope and then into empire strikes back. And I think, you'd get a good feeling for what might be happening with Destiny 2. Mm -hmm. mm. wow. Yeah, and, and if you're leaving the Disc 1 behind, it makes sense to leave Disc 1 behind with all of the content unlocked and playable. Mm. So if I go and pick that up off yeah. of a store shelf, I can still go and experience people everything roam that free. was there. Give them like yeah. a carrot on a stick and more than that too. Like just yeah. let people have all this stuff to kind of cap off the game and yeah. move on from there. Yeah. I think it's, it's a, just wonderful. It's a pseudo Game of the Year edition. It's as close as you're going to get to Destiny Game of the Year edition. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, another little bit of news. It's not Destiny news. I'm happy we talked about that because it was exciting. I was at work when that news broke. But more news has been going on in the video gaming world concerning a very popular YouTube channel, very popular video game critics, Greg Miller, Colin Moriarty, Nick Scarpino, Tim Geddes, and Kevin of the kind of funny fame. Now, recently, something has happened with these guys, and we talked about it pre-show. We decided we'd talk about it with you guys. Uh, back on March 8th was a, the United States, or I guess across the country, a day without a woman celebration where many women went out or didn't go out. They didn't go to work. A lot of women decided they would celebrate this day without women by staying at home, not spending any money, and not going to work. Colin Moriarty, the only, the only conservative member of the kind of funny group, made a joke on Twitter. His joke was just a few words. It said, ah, peace and quiet. That was the joke that he said, hashtag a day without women. Mm -hmm. Colin Moriarty was lambasted by the liberal game media. There are people from IGN and GameSpot that came to his Twitter and roasted him and said, I can't believe I believed in you. You were such a person that you, I used to look up to you. This is pathetic. I can't believe you had dropped to this level. Colin didn't know what was going on. He was actually in the shower when he came back to his Twitter feed. Right. And he talked. He talked about it with his girlfriend, Aaron. He he let her look at the tweet, you know, because she was coming home. He was getting ready to leave and go to work. She thought it was funny. He sent the tweet and went and took a shower. When he came back, pretty much his career had been under assault. Unfortunately, at least this is my perspective. His best friends at Kind of Funny, Greg Miller, Tim Geddes. Uh, Nick Scarpino and Kevin did not have his back on Twitter. And Greg Miller pinned a very snowflakey letter uh, and put it up on Twitter and basically apologized for Colin. Snowflakey, can you explain what that means? Uh, snowflake is a kind of a modern term for uber liberals who are offended by everything. There are people out there in the world now who you can't you can't walk down the street and look left and then right. Someone's going to get offended if you look to the yeah. right too fast. Yeah, that's such a shame that happens this day and uh, age. You can't, you can't voice your opinion. The freedom of speech is under fire. People find something is offensive speech, you know, not even hate speech. You can't say that. A person's feelings got hurt. You need to take that back. That's a snowflake. And so Greg penned yeah. a very, very snowflakey letter and put it on Twitter and basically apologized for Colin Moriarty. 
Colin Moriarty never apologized on Twitter. He never took his tweet down. He later said on podcasts, he was on the Glenn Beck Morning Show. He was on the Rubin Report. And just the day before yesterday, he was on Joe Rogan podcast. He never apologized for it. He still doesn't apologize for it. And even though Greg Miller said that Colin partly wrote this apology, I do not believe that at all because Colin didn't apologize at all on Twitter, his own Twitter account. Colin later that day resigned from Kind of Funny, the corporation that he he co-founded with Greg Miller and the other guys. And he has basically blown up across the internet uh, since this day because people who don't live in California, where these guys live and their company exists, see this as kind of an, infrig- an infringement on his rights, his freedom of speech. And, and it's kind of sad to see how the liberal games media really assaulted his character. Different news outlets called him a racist for saying, making this that's, comment. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, just wrong. It's, that's, it's, he, it's there's char- nothing racist. Like, that's it's character silly. assault that's been happening against Colin Moriarty. But thank goodness, Colin came out a few days later and announced after his second outing on the Rubin Report that he was starting his own YouTube channel called Colin's Last Stand, which is going to be primarily about politics. And he's going to be able to say what he believes and and speak his own mind without the limitations of working at a corporation where people where people have opposing points of view and shout you down if they don't agree with your point of view. And so he asked people like me and like you and like people watching our show to go to his Patreon page to support his new efforts on his YouTube channel. He was only asking for $10,000 per month uh, for him to move out of the apartment with Greg Miller, who he hasn't called a best friend since this day. Um, so him and his girlfriend could move and he could start his own YouTube channel and talk about what he feels passionate about. Uh, the last time I looked, he was at $40,000. Uh, also, kind of funny, their their Patreon page went from 36000 I think, down to – it's either nineteen or 16000 now, just in the, the course of the last two weeks. So this has hit them tremendously. Their YouTube analytics, they've been losing hundreds of subscribers every single day. Uh, all of their videos, Greg Miller actually yesterday addressed this on, on the, their morning show because people were actually sp- paying money to ask them questions. And someone had spent, I think, $15 and said, you have got to address what's going on here. Look at these dislikes. Half yeah. of the people here are very upset. And Greg Miller, again. So uh, I, I think that does it, right? That, that's yeah, the that, news. That, that's it. That's well, it. What, what do you think about this piece? I, I think we know what you think. You, yeah, you I'm pretty sure much interjected what you think. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so to, um, to, to counterpoint that, um, if we forget the politics side of it um, for a moment and forget about the repercussions of whether or not the man should or shouldn't have lost his job, I think what we need to acknowledge is that the offence that was taken at, at, at the tweet um, was because he targeted what was potentially a, a group that had been marginalised. So when I say that, um, women in general, the reason that this protest or this this trend had happened um, was to acknowledge the value and acknowledge the degree of um, lack of recognition that women felt in yeah, the workplace. And the value of equality that's deserved. So by i guess belittling that by by adding humor to that and granted humor can be injected anywhere i've seen incredible jokes on very sensitive topics and i think they're very funny i think in the the timing of it and other things there do you agree that it could have been and i don't want again to to uh, enter into the politics of what happened to him on the back but do you agree that it could have been maybe a bit uh, timed a bit more sensitively than during the protest actually happening to, to be little women again. two very different sides to this. One, I think really when I saw the tweet, the first thing I thought was I had a little laugh and I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, moved on. That was basically it. I was not offended by it personally. Then I kind of thought about it a little more. I'm like, this is a day though of International Women's Day, right? Like this is a really good thing, you know, sort of stepping up women's role in the world and equality like equality is a super important thing diversity is very very important everyone in my mind should have equal rights that's super important to me everyone Uh, does Ravi. everyone does yeah and they absolutely deserve to and basically so i kind of see it from both sides i don't think he was trying to attack anyone or had any vicious intent with this and i don't think it's fair to uh, get angry assassin. or you know send hate to him or kind of funny don't do that I don't think that's the way to do this but really I don't think that 
people should have reacted so badly to this. He could have. Yes, it, it was. Made it he made a he fun. made a misogynist joke on like you know a day where women are celebrating women, right? Like so yeah. that's yeah. that's like me making a, a racist joke on Martin Luther King Day, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So that's where there's both sides of it. People did overreact, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, you know, it's kind of like you could have maybe been a little more positive about this. But yeah, I mean, I, that being said, though, I kind of agree with you guys. Is it, I don't I don't think I wouldn't have made the joke. I'll be honest with you. I don't think the guy should be assassinated for making a dumb joke. Absolutely. Hey, not. Like I, no, it was harmless. You know, I could see like saying on Twitter, like that was a fucking dumb joke. And, you know. Like these are women celebrating being women just today, be a man. More careful. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe like, that was the best time for the is. jokes. But if I'll tell you what, if I made a joke like that and my friends didn't support didn't me, back. and in fact, if if they if not only did they not support me, but they they were like basically not backstabbing. Backstabbing is the wrong That's word. True. It is though, Briar. But they, they were making I, I mean, derogatory comments about. I'd be joke. out of there just like he was. Like I yeah. to me like. Your friends, my friends, how I know, you know somebody's your friend if you do something fucking stupid and they're for, they're for you anyway, right? I, That's how I know if somebody's my friend. Listen, let, let me make a quick a quick interjection here, okay? To me, this is much more simple than, than we're making it out to be. I don't think Colin made a misogyn, misogynistic joke. It's definitely a misogynistic I think that, joke. I, I think he did. He, he, I, <laughs> it's definitely. This, this, <laughs> let, me, let me finish, okay? Not everybody feels that way. My entire life, by women, might I add, uh -huh. have I been told that women do a lot of talking. We talk a lot uh -huh. more than y'all do. Shit. So this is something that has been kind of ubiquitous across the world, that women are more talkative than men. He made an Al Bundy, all in the family joke. That yeah. used to exist everywhere, and now you can't make a joke. Now, this is what uh, Greg Miller said on his morning show yesterday. He said, if he made the show here, we would have laughed about it. I would have probably not made the joke, but he would have been fine. Everything would have been great. He said, but on Twitter, there's no context. Who are yeah, you? Who are you to say where a person can and can't make a joke yeah. in an open form? And on look, Twitter, if people, you, people look, who follow I, I'm comments, not, people I'm not saying, Beastly, that... Uh, to me, I'm not saying that he should or shouldn't like be allowed to make a joke like this. But if you do make a joke about women on a day that celebrates women, expect some fucking backlash. Yeah, and, and let's be <laughs> like, I mean, come on, that's that, yeah. reasonable, Colin, isn't it? Like, Colin Moriarty is not a stance, yeah. newcomer to media. He's not a newcomer to social media or the way in which um, the liberal masses would respond. He's a, a you know, former senior editor of IGN. He's been, you know, he, he is not, uh, you know, a, a green nose kid. I, I think he had to, he may not have expected that reaction, but I think if you say something like that, you've got to expect a reaction. At least a uh, little bit. Yeah, there would have been at least and, a bit. You know, I'm not going to take stances either way or the other. I think that the the joke itself was poorly, it was in poor taste. Um, do I think that the reaction that happened to it was correct? No, I don't. I think there's there's fault in both sides of this, uh, and I think there's whichever side you fall on, whether it's yourself, BC, or or myself and, and Robbie, um, I think you, you you've both got valid arguments in it. You know, he was yeah. overpunished, totally but he should make the joke in the first place. This yeah. this is the the last thing I'll say about it. I think you guys know from my YouTube channel how I feel about this situation, but uh, I don't care about the reaction of the world when a person says a joke because guess what? People are going to be offended from here until the end of human life. There's going to be someone that gets offended all the time and maybe the joke was timed poorly. That wasn't my issue because guess what? People get over it. I don't think there was anyone rolling over that night in their bed saying, Colin Moriarty, I can't fucking believe he said that. He said, ah, oh, peace and quiet. It's just so derogatory. I don't mm -hmm. think there was one person who felt that way. But the mm -hmm. way that his friends reacted to this was my issue. If you build a the way and the way the press in general reacted to it, yeah, the, the because press I feel like the press him. jumped all over it. Mm -hmm. And like, it was yeah, stupid. yeah, I think it was a like, dumb joke stupid. and it was a dumb time to make that joke. But was it was it worth like it was, it was the racist. uproar that it caused? No, hell no, Come on. no, absolutely not. The way not that his close. friends, the way that kind of funny dealt with this issue is the problem. And the reason that's, I say that that's is where I have a problem too. They 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 have built a legacy on what Greg Miller calls his best friends. Okay. We are all best friends and kind of funny. We all have a hive mind, everyone's peaceful. 
No one says anything that gets out of line. And if you do, everyone in the comments is going to shout you down. I'm a part of the kind of funny Facebook group. I have been for a couple of years. If you get in there and you get into a debate that appears provocative, the moderators will come to you and say, hey, look, this is kind of funny. We don't do that here. It's a hive mind mentality. And so you know, Colin that's Moore, how I run my Twitch channel. If you make a joke that is offensive in my Twitch channel, you're not going to be in my Twitch channel long. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be in my Twitch chat because I don't want it get, there. I don't want people get, coming into my Twitch chat and feeling offended because somebody's making yeah. jokes about them. You should be yeah. welcome. I mean, yeah. unless they're Canadian, then it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fine to pull <laughs> it. I'll tell you about it. That's I'll tell you what is. Hold on one <laughs> second, Gary. That's understandable, and I understand how businesses work. But my problem is this. If you build this legacy in this company and this corporation on the idea of best friends, and you treat someone who's physically and literally been your best friend for 10 years with this much disdain and what I consider turning your back on them, like Colin Murray already said on multiple podcasts and shows, I felt left. I felt like my friends didn't have my back. I'm so thankful for the people on uh, Twitter who came out to defend me. He felt that way because the people who mattered to him didn't do this. Yeah. And to me, friendship is what matters. Nobody's going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes, and so am I. And I'm sure we've all had off-color jokes at some point in our life. But the thing is, totally. if you make those jokes and your friends and family turn their back on you with the people who don't really matter, then your whole paradigm of your life, your life changes. And that's the issue I took with this. It may have been an off-color joke. It may have been poor timing. And that, I will concede that. It may have been, right? And to me, that's still up in the air because of the nature of the joke. But the way that this was dealt with internally by a company that built its legacy on what best friends are, it turned it all into a sham to me. And many people in the community, kind of funny, feel the exact same way. This is not a community of real best friends because best friends don't let this happen. And that's just how I feel. Talking about best friends, uh, I know that Briar and me used to be best friends with Call of Duty. And we may well be best friends again. Uh, Robbie, tell me about <laughs> World War II, Call of Duty. Wow, what a transition, guys. That was awesome. Right. That was good. <laughs> that was I great. like it, though. Yeah, I think we've summed up a kind of funny conversation, so it is what it is. All right, guys, the next Call of Duty game in development by Sledgehammer Games and due by the end of this year has had a Reddit leak revealing new details. First off, the game will be called Call of Duty World War II. Oh, if that's, that's original. Going all the way back to the <laughs> origins of the very first Call of Duty games set during that time. This comes after Activision CEO Eric Hirschberg previously stated this year's Call of Duty will go back to its roots. Several videos posted online to, relating to the unannounced game have been hit by copyright strikes from Activision, adding more fuel to the fire that this may end up being this year's game. Additionally, a newly introduced line of Mega Bloks figures for Call of Duty shows a World War II infantry vehicle and soldiers. Mega Bloks are dicks, man. They're screwing everyone. <laughs> they leaked <laughs> Destiny, now they leak. Activision and Mega Bloks are going to have a real fucking problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let me ask you guys a question. This new Call of Duty, I'm actually looking forward to it because back in the day when every Call of Duty was about, you know, World War One or World War yeah. II, it was World great War II to specifically, see. yeah. Yeah, yeah, mostly. I, I never really got into it. I would play it. And I was like, oh, this is kind of, you know, it's back in the past. And back then, everybody yearned for something new. I think now mm -hmm. with modern technology, it's going to be amazing to play it. But is it going to be the exact same story we've played over and over again? Now, we've never had a Call of Duty. That, uh, I might be wrong. You're probably going to You're, you're totally wrong. Yeah. We've never had a Call of Duty do the D-Day landings, as far as I'm aware. The only time I've played it was Medal of Honor Allied Assault in there was, 2002. There, 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 there definitely was. There was, I don't know if there was a Call of Duty specifically, but I've stormed the deep beach at Normandy multiple times over multiple the years. Times. Yeah. yeah. I, guess. Yeah. See, I remember <laughs> doing it in 2002 on Medal of Honor, which was a great series. But, uh -huh. you know, the, the Call of Duties I played was the first one on PC and United Offensive, the expansion two and three. There were two, I think you stormed some bunkers. On I want to say North. Call of Duty 2, you did storm Normandy. I think it I'm was. I'm not for sure, though. I don't think it was. I think it was North Africa, but you stormed beaches. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, what, what do you guys think? For me, this this could be the game that, that reignites Call of Duty again. It, it, it very well could be, and I hope that it is. You know, Call of Duty is the one that you always want to root for, even though there's three different developers making them. Uh, it's, it's been a part of gaming history for so long. But I have a good question. We all know that there was a tragedy that happened with Hitler in Germany and, and what happened to the Jewish people. Do you guys think I would have had a chance? I think they'd have got rid of you first, let's be honest. 
Not because of ethnicity, just just because of who you are. Because I'm an asshole. Because yeah, you're a PS4 it. fanboy and Hitler loved the Xbox. Yeah, we're out of here with you. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler was PC master <laughs> when he saw the way. <laughs> we're going to put you in the gas chamber and gas you out. Jeez. Um, I'm actually interested in this. Uh, like Getting back to a boots on the ground Call of Duty sounds interesting. I don't know, though, that Call of Duty is ever going to really get me back like they had me. You know, like... Yeah, we'll I, I just spent yeah. so much time with that series, and I've moved on to games that offer just kind of like broader experiences than here's a single player campaign, here's your multiplayer, uh, here's the oh. zombies, you know, like like this segmented kind of way that Call of Duty works. I, I just feel like I've moved on past that. Games right. have moved on. Hear past me that. out. Hear me out. Call of Duty, World War Two, yeah. D Day landings. You're on the uh, the beach, you know, you're on the little landing craft. Okay. Rafts go down, you storm that bunker open world survival game now open you've world got Ooh, you've got whoa. to get it you've got to get to the next town lock your dream down get yourself <laughs> forward. i'm just saying Listen, be cool. very, yeah, i would be very interested in that gary i think you should be making you know go yeah. and making that game because i don't think that activism Gold is work at sled <laughs> yeah, you they find, i mean survival games are a buzzword last year this yeah. year people love it look at breath of the wild look how at resident innovated evil. the resident series evil resident evil right now you've got your little Thompson machine gun, you've got what you've saved from your buddies at the beach, and you've got a bunker locked down. You've now got to push forward through occupied France. I love it. Done. Oh, sounds Imagine like fun. finding a beautiful oh, French woman yes. who lets you stay in her basement behind a brick wall, and then you fall in love with her, and you get laid, and then right after that, you both escape, and her house explodes. It's not Mass Effect. It's you know, because Call of Duty, especially their, their campaigns... They have been extraordinarily boring for years. And I know a lot of people like Infinite Warfare's campaign. Yeah. I didn't. I thought it was it, awesome personally. It is just, yeah. it's that but same zone regimented zone. shoot 15 guys, just... move up 10 steps, shoot 15 more guys, move up 10 steps. Like, it's been exactly that since yeah, Call of Duty 1. Eventually it got boring. I was like, okay, I'm not into this anymore. I agree with you on that. Was the Infinite Warfare backlash enough? to knee-jerk a tra change in the gameplay element, though. Possibly. Is it is it even reasonable to think that they could have done that in a year? It's not just That game Warfare. was in development before Infinite Warfare came out, right? Yeah. Well, Advanced Warfare didn't really do great. Black Ops, no. fine, but Advanced Warfare got some shit. Yeah, I think it's the um, last couple of years Infinite altogether Warfare. They've, where they've made this decision. Do, do we see it? Is, it? is Call of Duty going to surprise us? I just think, you know, don't, don't count out a cash cow like Call I of Duty. I think 100% they could easily smack us in the face and make a comeback. Like, this game, I think, could be really cool. Just because it's been so, so long since we've had a World War II game like this. And... It's literally been over 10 years. Especially on new technology. Like, they could really just make it feel authentic. There's so many... I just don't see it such happening. such cool history I really don't. and such cool weaponry. Yeah. And the story... I think the most, scenario, the most likely scenario... The most likely scenario is that they're going to try and emulate the success they had in the past. Yeah. They're, they're not going to move that series forward. They're going to move it back. I don't know. If you're watching the games, uh, what's popular on Switch? I disagree. I think yeah, this is good for them. King of the Kill, uh, H1Z1. Uh, you got Player Unknown's Battlegrounds coming out now in early access. People love that. Conan Exiles, aside from the big floppy schlongs, oh, that that's a, a survival game, you know? Aside from the main thing in Conan Exiles. <laughs> aside from the old dick. Dick. Trouser yeah. snakes, man. Nobody does them like Conan. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, Beastly, I cut him. Uh, you know, whenever Briar brings that joke up, I always look down and uh, smile. <laughs> I know what it's like to be Conan. But um, I'm excited, man. I, I think it's a good idea for him to go back. Who knows what'll happen? It, Call of Duty has never been open world. So to me, that's kind of elite. But you guys are right that I feel like there's been a lot of stuff going on in the, the, the Call of Duty universe. And we've seen a, a, a steady decline, I would say, in popularity and sales. And maybe it is time for them to, to pull a new rabbit out of the hat and try something completely different. Who knows? You know? Yeah, go back it to the roots. I... I mean, this is all positive for me personally. I'm just thinking about it. I'm very excited, like definitely. But who knows? You're right. They maybe might not be good. We'll we'll see. All right. Well, Robbie, I, I'm rooting for you, Sledgehammer. I hope you kill it. I want World War II, a really good World War II shooter. That and plus, be finally, so you good. can shoot Hitler and it actually look like Hitler. You know how much joy people are going to get out of that? Oh yeah, it would look photorealistic. It would be awesome. All right. What's <laughs> next on the news here? 
All right, guys, a leaked job listing for development studio Tango Gameworks suggests a sequel to The Evil Within is in development. Is that the What's one that came out and it was like letterboxed on a widescreen yeah. TV? Yeah. A little Shinji, bit. Shinji Mikami uh, I didn't, made didn't that game. It. It, it was in development for like 12 years. Um, I played it, but my fanboy glasses were on and I liked it more than I actually do now. Now, looking back, I'd easily give it a 4 out of 10. I think I gave it a 7 on my review. Don't what? watch that review. Yeah. Wow. Shut up, Robbie. At least I like uh, The Legend of Zelda. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is something I'm really on the fence about. Who knows what will happen with Shinji Mikami. And I don't even know if he's involved at this point, so time will tell. What do we got next, Robbie? Me, personally, I love Evil Within, so I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, I hope it's true. Uh, <clears throat> all right, Uncharted The Lost Legacy won't feature Nathan Drake in any way, and it is set around 6 to 12 months after the end of Uncharted 4. Did staying we completely know this? separate this news? from the yeah. main Uncharted storyline. It is, yeah. It is it is news, but it's I think confirmed. we it's it's pretty much everyone could have just guessed that. Kind of Didn't obvious, they say yeah. that when they showed the sh the game for the first time that it wasn't going to be? Oh, maybe was the news that this, it wasn't going to star Nathan, Nathan Drake when they showed it, and then now the news is it won't he won't be in there at all. Yeah, there, this this is the news is that it's completely separate. Like this is something that's way different from what they did before. And and I admire them, and uh, you know, kudos to uh, Naughty Dog for this quickly jumping back out there with the Uncharted franchise, keeping it relevant and not letting it die uh, with the legacy of Part Four. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Totally What's next, love Uncharted. Robert? All right, Nintendo has confirmed the widespread issues in the left Joy-Con controller on the Nintendo Switch, saying it was due to a manufacturing issue with the wireless interface and a small number of controllers, and that this issue has already been resolved internally and will no longer happen going forward. Oh. Yeah. Have you seen the fix? Some guys opened up the Joy-Cons that came it's back. just move the antenna. Literally, that's about it. No, it's, no, it's a no. little tiny cube of sponge. Yeah, it's like it's, a huh? it's metallic yeah. sponge that blocks signal. I guess there's an interference problem with that. It's the... that simple of an issue? Yeah. 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 It sounds yeah. like an issue that shouldn't have happened. They put a metallic... Put a little, little bit of sponge in there. How Fix did it right they off. miss this? I don't understand. Apparently, that. there's two manufacturers making those boards. One manufacturer there's no problem with. One manufacturer there was this, this problem with. That's why, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think it's pretty clear to everybody that they, they were rushing that product to market so they yeah. might have just missed it and tell what else and nintendo have been doing they've been hiring developers for an untitled rpg which i saw we skipped over there i'm not having you skip over the pokemon news oh wait say pokemon. that again all right what do you don't say that's just, just pokemon. pokemon are you out of your i'm not into mind? pokemon but I, uh, you're not into right. zelda either we're talking to real gamers here. <laughs> i am into zelda shut up i love that okay. why does robbie hate fun what's up with robbie i don't no, he's like the evil within. I thought so, Canadians uh, were supposed to be nice. They are. <laughs> oh, we're all shitty human beings. Sorry to break your bubble. Anti-Canadian. <laughs> yeah. We're not, I'm, I'm not nice. An Sorry. unannounced Nintendo Switch game. Wow. I, that's actually you pretty guys, You want to share with the rest of the class? Oh, we're talking about the mainline Pokemon developer Game Freak has posted several job listings for an unannounced Nintendo Switch game. And it said that, quote, is a title that everyone knows in code. It's Pokemon. It's a Pokemon. That'd be fucking stupid. Why would the Pokemon developer make a listing for a new Pokemon game? That's not it's even... Facts. They didn't technically say it's Pokemon, but it obviously is. It's something that everybody yeah. knows. That's the only thing they can go with. And actually, it's a Nintendo game. So it's either a, a Nintendo franchise that everybody knows about that they turned into an RPG, or it's a Pokemon game that's all technically all RPGs yeah. besides one that came out for the Wii U. To me, this is really, really interesting, and I've fallen off the wagon on Pokemon. I think the last Pokemon I played was, you know, a few generations back. I've not, I've, I've bought them all, but they've sat on the shelf just because I, I've got a Nintendo tax that I have to buy everything. <laughs> um, but Breath of the Wild and Nino Kuni, actually, if anyone played that on the PS3, showed me that open world creature RPGs work. Imagine Breath of the Wild's world with either a game like Pokemon or Monster Hunter, where you're climbing up the mountains to find this rare Pokemon that lives up there and he's in certain that's climates crazy. and you fight him in a condition. To me, that's what the Switch could bring. You know, if you <gasps> took Breath of the Wild and modded it into a Pokemon game, you've got the perfect Pokemon game. That sounds but, fun. Damn, you, yeah. you're just giving Nintendo gold, Gary. Pokemon on the Switch, too. I mean, that'd be the first time it's on a home console, right? Or, uh, I still main, don't. A mainline Pokemon game be on a console? Yeah, they made a design decision, Game Freak, to 
avoid Nintendo home consoles. They'd focused on the handheld. Uh, I think there was a, an underhanded deal that they would focus and push the handheld for Nintendo. But the Game Freak director has said that it's interesting for Pokemon because it's the first time that their home console is also a handheld and they'll definitely want the franchise in some form on the Switch. That could be Pokemon Rumble, you know, for all we know, or Coliseum or Pokemon Tournament. But that it's job listing... Now. Yeah, it could be. I take Snap. Snap's good. No, the uh, the rumored game is called Pokemon Stars. It's well, like an update to Sun and Moon. It's I a think sequel. This to is, that. I feel well, like this Pokemon is separate. Snap to that. that that uses a camera, correct? The Switch doesn't have a camera, does it? Uh, no, but there's no reason why a Joy-Con can't be switched out to have a camera in it. They're saying that the Joy-Con acts as an expansion port for the future. There's patents that look at different things going into the Joy-Con ports. Nintendo vibrators. All right. Well, this is exciting news. Is that right, what you want? <laughs> no, I mean, so you know, I gotta yeah, yeah, keep the women happy, man. All right, so this is pretty telling news. Early on in the development of Resident Evil 7, the game was described as being very similar to Resident Evil 6 and said it took time for the project to come together before Capcom had the idea of setting the game in first-person view and setting the focus on horror. Why would it take Capcom that long to figure out that horror matters in a Resident Evil game? They it's thought people horizon. wanted an action shooter. They wanted Resident big, Evil big biceps like punching game. rocks. You guys remember Chris punching rocks in Resident Evil 5? It's polar it is polarizing. I'm uh, a massive pussy myself. And part of the reason that I was apprehensive to play Resident Evil is that I don't <laughs> like horror films. I don't like horror games. I shit I myself. Either. Like I love you guys are so games, similar. So. so for me, I could totally get that they'd say, Do you know what? This is our big VR killer app. Do we really want to make it that scary? Some people are just not gonna play it or watch it. You know, that I actually stopped playing it in VR because I, I wasn't enjoying it. It was scaring me too much. Like I was a joke. <laughs> started playing it in the console. I was getting palpitations, man. It just wasn't healthy. It wasn't healthy. That heart. Oh no. Yeah. It, no. It, it was. It was one of the first VR experiences I had on you know in my life. And that kitchen demo just literally. I almost that's, put myself. That's right? scary, to... man. That kitchen demo yeah. is fucking scary because that it'll lure you in, man. That like she's behind you and you're like, what the. F and you're strapped down in that chair, you can't move. Yeah, so like, and you she just pulls that accept. knife out, stabs oh, you in your leg. Look, Briar, that he's was reliving crazy. it. Look, I see the sweat. I'm sorry, yeah. Briar, you shouldn't have done that. So I totally get it. If, if you make a deep horror game, you are you're, you're taking a, a pun. You yeah, know, they they took the, a swing and they hit. Look at the forums, the PSVR um, Reddit. There's so many people saying, "Man, this game looks amazing." But I don't like horror games. I don't want to play it. Like it's too bad that this is the, the like the big game for VR right now. You know, because it's it's a horror game, and that's one thing that, that limits its that, audience somewhat. Sorry, I interrupted. One thing that Briar and Gary has admitted to that you guys are pussy when it comes to horror games. So what we got to do? We got to get together and 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 campaign and tell all the pussies to stop being pussies. And Gary, that's not how it works. <laughs> you guys did. You guys stopped it. Uh, I was so, lucky enough that I had chat, right? Yeah, so I played it live it. on Twitch, and I had chat. Like, yeah, it was like having somebody like holding my hand the whole time, yeah. you know? Yeah, you and, take off and the my, hold my fiance, crying. my fiance okay. is a sadistic woman. There's only oh, one way to describe it. So no matter how many times I tell her, don't fuck with me when I'm playing VR. Just don't fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> Every uh, time she fucks with me, you know, I'm playing it. Suddenly she's grabbing the shit out of me. She's hitting me. She's doing... it's, it's an abusive relationship. This is a That's cry awesome. for help more than a podcast. This is, this is it. <laughs> but no, I I started playing VR now when she's not at home. I wait for her to go out and then I play VR. That's, That's how smart. Bad it's got. Smart. Oh, man. You're setting yourself up for the worst okie doke because she's going to sneak in the house and scare the living shit out of you, man. Yeah, I come back from <laughs> grocery shopping earlier. Bow, I bitch. Wake up. Yeah. I wake up screaming. Bow, bitch. I wake up screaming at night of that very thing. Trust me, I, it's going to happen. So this yeah. little bit of news is about this console that nobody can find. And I've heard uh, kind of contradictory news lately that more of these are coming out and people will be able to grab them. But GameStop is seeing very high demand for the Nintendo Switch, and the company expects the console to largely be sold out through the rest of 2017, says GameStop COO Tony Bartel. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow. So Nintendo, last week we were saying that Nintendo doubled the production yeah. on them right yeah and they're yeah. still thinking that it's going to be mostly sold out for throughout from the year eight to 16 and from eight to 16 million huh? wow some people that's fucking some people good like news Zelda. for nintendo yeah Zelda's a really, really good. good game 
It's like, an excellent game. That's the best launch game that I can remember ever. Wow, any system. Probably one of the best, yeah. Up Maybe Halo, the only one, one I can think Star of that would be better is uh, possibly Mario 64. But I honestly, yeah. I think Zelda's better than Mario 64. Was amazing too. Those are I, I'm sure it is, is I, I really am. It, is Mario's it a launch game system. for the Switch, though? Yeah, I mean, it's available at launch on a system. Zelda? Yeah, it is. Or is it a Wii U port? Damn it's it. available yeah. at launch on the system. I'd say it's a launch game. Yeah. I mean, actually, it is a launch game because when it came out, didn't it come out for the Switch first? And didn't, I mean, didn't you, were they both the same day? Same day. Same day. Yeah. Yep. But it's not my heels to die on, but it's just an interesting point. It's not unique. I don't need a Switch for that game. No, you don't. Me neither. But nobody I has didn't. a Wii U, so. Yeah, and people don't know what it's <laughs> I'm you know? one of the few people that do. Yeah, you got to go in the garage and, and dig through shit, look underneath tires to find it, and nobody really. I mean, who'd rather do that than just go spend... I had to blow a lot of dust off that Wii U. It hadn't been used in a while. You live in yeah. Canada. You do a lot of blowing up there anyway, so no no big deal. Oh, I'm blowing all day, all night, baby. <laughs> I had to get a couple of dick jokes I, in. I blow as much as I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I mean, you, so you far, love, You love we've the covered arena of time because he does Sexism, that racism, Nazis, and... <laughs> Penises. So and the PC other... Master Race. We also said that Hitler would have been in the PC Master Race. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I think we've covered the yep. five major food groups for today. This is fine. I think this was a good show, you know. Yeah, <laughs> raise your hand on the fun. internet if you're no, not offended yet, because we can take care of you two. <laughs> we can get that done. <laughs> hey, hey, look, guys, after the show, oh, everybody good. go to Twitter, go to the BC Thoughts Live Twitter page, and since the show is over, just write hashtag peace and quiet. <laughs> is that Thank it for news? Are we done? That's it. All right. Let's not cool. That. that was a good show. I, I had fun today. That was a good one. Uh, I'm looking forward to this week, though. I am really, like, we got Age of Triumph coming out, and, man, that is just feeding right into. Look at the gleam in his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It's Actually, so tomorrow, real. you know what I'm doing Child's tomorrow is I'm, I'm doing a charter to keep it live, so letting the, the viewers just dig right into my vault. Oh, we're going to troll <laughs> the heck out of you, Briar. Oh, man. <laughs> We're getting, getting all this live? new gear. Sure, We're getting all this new gear. I don't have any room to put it. What time are you going live? I'll be in my office. Uh, be, 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. All right. 1 p.m. I'll be Obviously on King... gang up on them. We're gonna do Kingdom it. Hearts. Uh, yeah. I think Kingdom Hearts drops this week, doesn't it? The remake. Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5. Does it really? On Tuesday. Yeah, the PS4. Oh, wow. They, so they just, be playing that. Didn't they just release a Kingdom they Hearts? They just released one, yeah. 2.5, yeah. 2. This 5. is the 1.5, 2.5 bundle. Where so the hell is Kingdom Hearts 3? You couldn't get them on PS4. So this is the what PS3 is... ports of the PS4 games. And the I, GBA I and Hearts, the PSP. I absolutely love Kingdom Hearts, but they have got to stop with these fucking names. They, you know, adding all these extra decimal points. Final Fantasy... Listen, Final I Fantasy... the city. Listen, Final Fantasy Decidio Duo Decum. That's the name of a fucking game. What? Square. Yeah. And all he could have just said Final Fantasy fighting. It would have Square been Square was on a roll for a while there, like doing the the spinoffs on Final Fantasy. Like they were on a roll. Yeah, one of the best Final Fantasies was on the PlayStation Portable, the PSP. Mm-hmm. Crisis Core. Like Briar, St- I love that black backdrop, Briar. You remind me of a white Barry White. <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like me some Barry White. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to wrap up this show, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, wait, gang signs. We, I, I'm not from the hood. I don't know any gang signs, so I just do the peace sign. And I cross yep. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm British. We, we don't have gangs. It, it, it's sort of <laughs> you have Br- no, you have British gangs, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Live long I, and prosper. I have to get friend. a license to get like a BB gun over here. There's yeah. no gangs. Yeah. I go-